Recently, we completed a shootout with big displacement adventure bikes. And the most common question we got was, why do you not have the KTM in the shootout? And the truth be told, we just couldn't get one. They weren't in the United States yet. But now, we've got one. In this case, we've got the 2022 KTM 1290 Super Adventure R. That's a mouthful, but that's because this is a handful of a motorcycle. It has been refined for 2022 to be more rally inspired, basically more KTM and more insane. Just like all big KTM adventure bikes for quite a while, this thing is powered by a 1301cc LC8 V-Twin. This thing is insane. KTM claims 160 horsepower and over 100 foot-pounds of torque out of this motorcycle. That puts it at the top, or near the top, of the big displacement adventure bikes. And they've done some changes for 2022 to make it Euro 5 compliant, but keep that horsepower. But they didn't stop there on just keeping the power. They refined it, and they refined the transmission. So it's got a new shift drum to make shifting easier in and out of gear. To be honest, we've never had any complaints about this engine. It's a beast. It makes a ton of torque, super powerful. You never wanting more power out of this motorcycle, but it can be too much at the same time. So KTM, of course, has their uh, motorcycle traction control system that works off of ride modes, but it also, you can tailor it to what you're doing in each of those modes. In sport mode, the thing gives you all the power, all the torque, and it's very snappy. It is a beast on the street when you put it in that sport mode. But then you put it into street mode, kind of mellows it out a little bit, mutes the power delivery, but it's still got all of the torque and the ability to just move down the road effortlessly. Then you have off-road mode. Cuts back on the power, dials the power down, and basically makes it a little more manageable for the off-road riding. Then there's a rain mode, which really dials down the power and really locks down the traction control for slippery days. I put it in rain mode, and you can definitely feel the reduction in power. And then you've got the optional mode you've got rally mode. Basically what it does is it gives you the ability to fine tune every parameter that you can get on this bike in terms of power delivery. So you can pick the throttle response from sport, street, off-road, or rally, which is really snappy right off the bottom and then kind of tapers off on the top to give you a lot of control in the dirt when you're really twisting it on. You could adjust the amount of slip or skid or slide and you can dial it through nine levels. One being the least restrictive, nine being the most, and you can fine tune it for every bit of dirt that you're on, on the fly, which is a really cool system. One and two is basically like you have no trash control whatsoever. It lets it spin up, it lets it get sideways. It's just a very, very small safety net to when you really get sideways. I mean, you have to really get it sideways before it starts dialing it back in. On this bike, it's got so much power. I found myself riding in three and four and five, a lot more than maybe some of KTM's smaller displacement bikes like the 890 and the 790, where I always left it in a one and two and I never went above that because I always felt like it was too restrictive. On this bike, three, four, and five are actually the sweet spot. KTM reworked the chassis for 2022 to make it a quicker handling bike while making it more stable. And the way they did that is they moved the steering head back 15 millimeters to just give it a little bit more front end authority and be quicker on the front. In the back, they increased the length of the swing arm by 15 millimeters, which helps with suspension action and helps the bike track straighter. Just like all Super Adventure R's that have come before it, the suspension is manually adjustable. This is a rally inspired adventure bike. On the S model, They've got electronic suspension adjustments and all that stuff, just like you would find on a lot of the other adventure bikes. But here, this is for the most hardcore customer that wants to really fine tune their ride. So they leave it full analog. In the front, you have a 48 millimeter WP Explore fork, which has separate functions. One side's compression, one side controls rebound. Those are completely adjustable along with preload. In the back is a WP PDS rear shock, also Explore product line and it is fully adjustable for compression, rebound, and preload. On-road suspension action is awesome. It's poised, it's controlled, and how can it not be? Because you can set it up for whoever the rider is. Me, I'm a bigger guy. I increase the preload on both ends. I crank down a little bit 
Couple clicks on compression, front and rear. The bike is planted and it's stable and it doesn't do anything crazy, but it's still supple enough that you don't feel most of the road chatter. Some of the, the bigger cracks in the road and stuff, you'll start to feel and go, oh, it's a little bit jarring, but that's because I set it up stiff. I want it stiff for the road riding. Get in the dirt and that same setting worked really well. It soaked up everything. It used up all the travel. When you're, when you're setting up suspension, you want to use all the travel, but you don't want to hit the end of the travel. And this bike doesn't hit the end of the travel as often as the older bike, it feels like to me. But the most of the time, it's super refined. It tracks really well, and it just soaks up all the chunk and junk and big rocks that you want to hit. It just plows right through it. I'm really impressed with the suspension. I'm going to say that the biggest chassis change, though, is the fuel tank. So they've taken a 6.1 gallon tank and they've made it a three piece tank with saddle sides, kind of like the 790 Adventure and the 890 Adventure. That lowers the center of gravity, improves handling, but the biggest benefit on a bike this big is actually the comfort when you're standing up. It makes the bike so much thinner between your legs. You can get further forward on the bike and it really increases the control. On road or sitting down, they've lowered the seat height to 34.6 inches and that's a good thing for a lot of people, but it also comes with some trade-offs. So leg room now has been shortened. So for me, when I'm sitting down, I feel a little bit cramped. My knees are up a little bit higher and I feel like I don't have as much leg room, which then leads to a little bit less comfort. Other ergonomic changes, the new seat. It's got a nice gripper feel on it. It's a nice shape. It's very comfortable. Even with the step, it doesn't feel like it's locking you into place, but there are times when you're sitting all the way forward, there's a pretty steep kick up in the front. It does get a little uncomfortable if you tend to really get up on the tank while you're sitting down, you're gonna have a little bit of a discomfort. Other knocks on the bike, I would say the windscreen, it, it moves through 55 millimeters or just over two inches or around two inches of travel up and down through a manual adjuster. It's not super easy to use while you're moving. The controls kind of block your reach to the adjuster, so you kind of have to be stopped when you move it. And to be honest, when you're wearing an adventure type helmet or a motocross type helmet with a beak, the wind flow over the top, it really doesn't seem to matter if you have it down or up, you get a little bit of buffeting. The only other knock I have on the bike is chain noise. When the chain just gets a smidge loose, it starts smacking up against the chain buffer and it feels like something's falling off the back of the bike kind of disconcerting and it's actually very annoying once the chain gets loose. So we're riding a bike with a new chain and by the end of the first day of testing, it had stretched significantly and it was really making some horrible noise. What they did with this bike, the changes they've made, I think it's really amazing. You've got really good switch gear on it now. Everything is tactile, it's in its place. The dash is amazing, it's huge. And they say it's a seven inch screen, but it's almost square seven inch so it is massive it's like you've got this movie theater of information right in front of you and everything is easy to read it's got different layouts for nighttime and daytime and whether you're in rally mode or street mode and it's got animations that show you what you're changing on the bike so at the end of the ride is the super adventure r super and i'm gonna say yes it's super duper ktm has always kind of gone their own way on adventure bikes and they continue to do it with the Adventure R and I love it. It's easier to ride than the previous model. It feels slimmer, it handles better, it's still got all the power and it's more refined. But it still has some KTM quirks that you would expect and find and that's what makes it KTM. It's not always perfect, but for those that are looking to really be a hardcore adventure rider, it probably is perfect. That's it for this review of the 2022 KTM 1290 Super Adventure R. For all the details, Go down in the description and click the link to the article. If you like what we're doing, hit the like button, subscribe, tell your friends, and as always, put your questions and comments down below, and we'll see you next time.